This presentation is about chiral antiferromagnets and about topological solitons like domain walls, skirmions, and vortices, and how they behave dynamically, how they travel and propagate. It has been done together with Nikos Papanikolaou at the University of Crete and with Ricardo Marcelo at uh, the Institute of Applied and Computational Mathematics in uh, Iraklion, now in Bari. We describe a ferromagnet via a square lattice. We consider a two-dimensional system and the spins interact uh, antiferromagnetically via exchange, the usual exchange interaction. We also consider the aluzinski moriga interaction and an isotropy initially of the easy axis type perpendicular to the film, but later also we will uh, study the case of easy plane anisotropy. Let me briefly say how we describe this uh, lattice, antiferromagnetic lattice. We consider a dimerization of the lattice or better a tetramerization of the lattice. And um, at each tetramer, we consider the sum of the spins. This gives the local magnetization vector and also the differences of neighboring spins, which would give the NL vector. In the continuum limit, in a continuum approximation, we get an equation for the NL vector only. This is a type of a nonlinear sigma model. If you look at the effective field, this is very similar to the corresponding field for a ferromagnet, but here it contains the NL vector. It has a usual exchange interaction, DM interaction and an isotropy. And we only need one parameter to describe this model. This lambda here in front of the jaluzinski morilla interaction, it is a combination of the original jaluzinski morilla parameter and the exchange and an isotropy parameters. If you go to the dynamical term, the time dependent, this is a second derivative in time, this is quite very different than in the ferromagnet, than in the landau lifts equation. If we look into the time independent sector of the sigma model. This is identical to a landau lifts equation. And therefore, what we know about domain walls, skirmions and vortices, the static domain walls, skirmions and vortices in a ferromagnet, we can also carry over the results to the antiferromagnet. Domain walls, skirmions and vortices exist exactly in the same way in an antiferromagnet, at least in the case that the magnetostatic field is not crucial for them. What we know is that for small dm parameter, the NL state, uniform NL state, is the ground state. Domain walls and skirmions are excited states over this NL state. But for a large DMI parameter, greater than 2 over p in the units in the rationalization that we use in this work, a phase transition occurs to the helical phase, that is, we get a spiral phase. Here is a picture of a skirmion for some small DM parameter. And here is a picture of the skirmion for a larger DM parameter. We know that for larger DM parameter, the skirmion radius increases. And what happens at the critical DM parameter two over P, the skirmion radius diverges to infinity. In this way, the skirmion disappears, does not exist anymore for larger lambda than that. Let us start a dynamical study by looking into the domain wall state, the one-dimensional model. In this one-dimensional model, if you take a NL wall, that is the component N2 is zero, the DM term vanishes. We are back then to a simpler model with only exchange and an isotropy. We know that for this case, we have Lorentz invariance. This model is Lorentz invariant. Therefore, once we know a static domain wall, we can obtain a moving domain wall, a propagating domain wall, simply by a Lorentz transformation. Instead of x, we put x minus vt over square root of one minus v squared. This is okay as long as v is smaller than one. And one here is the spin wave velocity in our normalization. What we learn is that there are propagating solitary waves in an antiferromagnet. This is quite different than the typical ferromagnetic dynamics. And what happens with the domain wall is 
if it propagates, it is contracted in the way dictated by the Lorentz transformation, we get the so-called Lorentz, Lorentz contraction for a traveling domain wall. This has been noted in many works up to now. However, we think that we should revisit this problem because it will give an additional important result. What we do, we uh, assume a traveling nail wall and we apply a Lorentz transformation. This is the equation that we get. What happens is that because of the presence of a derivative, space derivative here in the dm term, the coefficient is rescaled. So it is lambda over square root of one minus v squared. The traveling domain wall is still there. This term is still zero, but despite that this term is zero, this coefficient should be smaller than two over p in order to have the nl state as the ground state. Otherwise, the nl state is destabilized. Therefore, we impose that this lambda over square root of one minus v square should be smaller than two over p, which means that the velocity should be smaller than this square root, a critical velocity. Above this critical velocity, the nl state is destabilized, the domain wall is destabilized, and we should get a spiral state. This critical velocity is smaller than unity, that is, the domain wall can never reach in velocity the spin wave velocity. It is destabilized before that value. Therefore, the phase transition to the spiral state destabilizes the propagating domain wall for any velocity greater than Vc. Let us proceed to a similar study for the skirmion. We assume we have a propagating skirmion with velocity v in the horizontal direction. We uh, substitute the traveling wave and such in the equation, we get this equation, we have to solve this, we solve this numerically by a relaxation algorithm, for example. And we plot here the propagating uh, skirmions, the solutions that we found numerically. Here is a static skirmion for comparison, here is a, a skirmion propagating with some velocity 0.4, it gets elongated in the y direction. Here is a skirmion propagating with faster velocity, it is more elongated. In fact, the skirmion is expanding both in the x direction, the direction of propagation, and the y direction, perpendicular to that. It is expanding much faster in the perpendicular direction. This happens until we reach a critical velocity Vc, a maximum velocity Vc. When we reach this velocity, the skirmion expands to infinity, disappears by expanding to infinity. For example, for lambda 0.45, the velocity can be up to a value about 0 0.721. The question is why this happens. The key to understanding the maximum velocity of the skirmion is the numerical finding that the skirmion expands in both in the x and y direction as it propagates. We write separately the part of the equation which contains the x derivatives and the part of the equation that contains the y derivatives. Because the expansion in the y direction is much faster, in the limit that the skirmion is very fast and it is very much expanding in the y direction, we can neglect the red terms, the y derivatives. That way we are back to a 1D model that we have already seen in connection with the domain wall. We know now that the nail state is supported when the dimensionless parameter, that is here the lambda divided by the square root of one minus v squared is smaller than two over p. That is the velocity is smaller than this critical value. Above this velocity, the ground state is destabilized and we cannot have a skirmion or a propagating one. Let's look uh, in a comparison to with the numerics. The blue line is the critical velocity, the maximum velocity predicted by the previous argument. And we also find what is the maximum velocity, scheme velocity from numerics, that is we do simulations with different velocities and at some point we observe that the scheme expands to infinity and we cannot go uh, above this velocity. We do this for various values of the DMI parameter lambda and we get the red dots. 
the agreement with the theoretical curve is very, very good. That tells us that the origin of the maximum skirmion velocity attainable is the topological phase transition from the nail to the spiral state. We can look in the details of this diagram, could be interesting also for uh, specific applications. When the DM is small, the maximum velocity is close to one, that is the spin wave velocity. But when the DM is very large, it's close to this two over P, to the critical value for the transition to the spiral state, then the maximum velocity that the skin can attain could be very small. We move now to the case of easy plane anisotropy. Some older work has looked into this in the one dimensional case. And uh, it has been found that uh, for a small DM parameter, the nail state is a ground state. This is for the dimensions parameter lambda up to one half. For large DM parameters, so this lambda is greater than 0 0.7 approximately, we get the spiral, the usual spiral. We call this the flat spiral. Why? Because one of the components of the nail vector is zero. For example, the N2 component is zero. And then as you go along the spiral, you see the nail vector rotating in the one three plane. It is rotating in a plane. Therefore, we call it a flat spiral. What happens in the in-between regime for lambda between one half and 0 0.7? We still have a spiral state, but this is not the usual spiral. For this spiral, all components change. For example, here is a figure of the non-flat spiral. The one three component and three component rotate. So we have a rotation in the one three plane of the nail vector, but also the two component fluctuates, the N two component fluctuates. So you have a mutation of the nail vector as we go along the spiral. Let us call this a non-flat spiral. We look now in the two-dimensional easy plane antiferromagnet. And specifically, we look in a stripe geometry because this is suitable for applications, probably for shifting, for example, the magnetic information along the stripe. But it will also turn out to be interesting for fundamental studies. The DM interaction that we use here would favor an L vortex, an L type vortex. However, the boundary conditions that are due to the DM interaction primarily favor an orientation of the nail vector perpendicular to this boundary, the up and down boundary. The system is supposed to be infinite to the left and to the right. Because now the vector should point down here and up here, this seems to favor a block type vortex. We have then a competition between the DM interaction that wants an L vortex and the boundaries that rather favor a block vortex. And we end up with a hybrid vortex. We go immediately to, a, to the dynamics, to a propagating vortex state. We assume a vortex propagating with some velocity and we see that this vortex is contracted in the direction of propagation. It is expanding in the perpendicular direction. The contraction is almost Lorentz type in the direction of propagation, despite that this is not a Lorentz invariant model. So this is an approximate uh, result. If we increase the velocity of this vortex, we get a transition to some periodic state or almost periodic. We have here some edge vortices. The vortex in the center remains there. And if you look at the cross section here, in the center of this stripe, you will see that the nail vector configuration looks like a non-flat spiral. Increasing the velocity further, we get vortices one next to the other, a chain of vortices. And if we increase this even further, we get a flat spiral, which is almost one dimensional configuration, except for some slight deviations in the boundaries. Let us try to understand these transitions by reference to what we know from the 1D case. We expect three phases. We expect that if this 
effective parameter is smaller than the 0 0.5, that is the velocity is smaller than this, let's call it V and F, we will have the nail state and therefore a vortex or a propagating vortex on top of that. When we have this uh, effective parameter greater than the 0 0.7, then we are already in the usual spiral phase. And in the in-between values for effective lambda, that is in-between values for the velocity v, we are in the non-flat spiral phase. The expected uh, transition to the non-flat spiral is the red curve here. The expected transition to the flat spiral is the blue curve here. What we find numerically are the symbols. For small lambda, we are close to the expected values. For larger lambda, though, we get a transition to this non-flat spiral type periodic state that I showed before at this point here, which is larger than what we expect from the 1D theory. And we get a flat spiral for values larger than this uh, uh, blue dot up here. What is more, in between we get this vortex chain state that is of course not there in the one-dimensional theory. The conclusions are that the dynamics of topological solids in antiferromagnetism is really dramatically different than what we know from their ferromagnetic counterparts. The most striking, of course, is that traveling domain walls, kinements and vortices alike exist in antiferromagnets, and they have to an extent similar properties. There is a maximum velocity for solitons, and this is lower than the spin wave velocity in the system, depends on the DM parameter. We find the vortex chain phase, which arises due to the dynamics in the stripe geometry. And this is not there in the one case, of course, but it is not there either in the full D problem. We find this in the stripe geometry. The topological phase transition from the to the spiral phases is the crucial element that we have to take into account in order to understand fast soil dynamics. Thank you very much for your attention.